Good morning everyone, let's move the music stand. Feels like Christmas, doesn't it? <laughs> no, just joking. I've got slightly mildly, only very mild, mildly Christmassy jumper. Uh, let's save them for, for Christmas, but preparations can already get started because the Christmas carols are out, big day. Thank you to everyone who bought them already. I'm really, really grateful for your trust and I hope you will enjoy the carols. Um, let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me alright. Especially on Facebook, I had uh, my suspicion that the live will be at the 90 degrees angle, so just let me know if you need to turn your head or I should turn my screen, send the comments, send the like, just to let me know if everything is okay. Um, to those of you who are here for the first time, hello again. My name is Zuzanna and I'm a Polish harpist based in Edinburgh, Scotland. I teach harp, I play the harp, and every Friday I'm giving live harp lessons for free, where I'm discussing, talking about different tips for beginners harp, beginner harpists and not only. Um, I'm just checking my list to see if I said everything that I said. Yeah, and if you didn't know, I've just published my first collection of arrangements. How cool is that? I feel very, very proud of myself. And I hope you will also enjoy those carols. It's the very first time these carols, Polish Christmas carols, have been arranged for the harp. I mean, I mean I'm sure there were teachers who were making arrangements privately for the students, writing them out and so on. But this is the first ever publicly available arrangement specifically written for the harp in mind. Not easy -ish piano music, um, slightly adapted. This is specifically for the harp and it's available for and suitable for all harps, liver harps, pedal harps, and one of the carols is also possible to play on a non-liver harp, which I will talk about later a bit, answering your questions. Um, as promised, questions uh, about the Christmas carols, if you have any, ask them in the comments uh, right now in the live. If you are re-watching that live later, you can put your comments in the comment section or send me a private message. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Uh, but there we go. First question was, can I buy paper version of the carols? And the answer is, for now, no. Depending on how popular the carols will be, then possibly that will be an option next Christmas. And of course, those of you who buy the carols this year will be the first ones to find out. And I'm sure you will have a better offer than anyone else if paper version of the carols will arrive next year. But at the moment is the first time ever I'm releasing something. And uh, for convenience of you, the buyers, the players, and for um, just the easiest possible service that I can give to you. This is in electronic version, so I can uh, be in charge of the sending of the carols, the dispatch. I can't control post office, and as you all know, post offices can be very, very busy before Christmas, so I wouldn't want anyone being left waiting for their carols. This is why this year they are only available in the downloadable, downloadable tricky word, electronic format, which means that as soon as you buy them, as soon as you put your uh, PayPal login details or card details, they are there and the link is available for you to use for 30 days. Then, question number two, just checking quickly if there are any questions or any comments at all. Seems very quiet on Facebook. Let me know if you can see me. Instagram feels a bit more busy. Um, second question was, was, which carols are the easiest? What is the level? Will they be um, suitable for me? So. The carols in that book that I have conveniently printed yesterday myself for checking some final typos and, and stuff. They are organized from the easiest to more challenging. Here's the content page. There are two bonus versions which are slightly more advanced, which are weaved in between other carols, but they also have their easier version. And my idea was when working out the fingerings for that carol is to group them in increasing order of the number of fingers that you will be using. So the first two carols are written in such a way that people who only started playing the harp and play with just two fingers will be fine uh, playing these carols. Of course, there are more fingering options. And as you will read in the foreword to these carols, all fingerings are just my suggestions. And I'm absolutely happy for you or your teacher to suggest something different, for you to come up with something, something else. I'm generally even happy for people just to 
improvise on these carols because they are just beautiful melodies and can be embellished in many many different ways so uh, as long as you acknowledge that this was your source of inspiration the polish christmas carols in my arrangement uh, i'm happy with that so the first two carols let us come to see him polish title pójdźmy wszyscy do stajenki and when the christ is born polish title gdy się chrystus rodzi they are perfectly fine to play to be played by someone who only uses three fingers then next three maybe even four carols four carols for sure are out of ten are suitable for anyone who plays just with three fingers and all the other carols uh, four of them including the two more advanced versions so in total six carols are meant to be played by someone who uses is confident with using four fingers although I am sure that there are ways of getting around that and simplifying things if you work with your teacher or if you try to do it uh, a bit differently yourself. So that was that. Carols are roughly organized from the easiest to more advanced and they are suitable, they will be suitable for anyone who worked on playing the harp for between a few months. The first easiest carols will be fine for someone who started playing this September to two or three years, depending how much practice you do, of course. That's always uh, one thing which matters most. Then let me find the piece of paper with more questions. The last question I got was, what kind of harp do I need? And I suppose this was the question for the range of the carols um, that, uh, and what kind of size of the harp you require. And I looked at the carols and the lowest string that you will need for any of them is that B below middle C. So middle C on my harp is here, that's the lower C and here is the B, just checking if people on Instagram can see that. So that's the lowest string used in these arrangements. However, only one, two, three, only four carols are using that lowest string. And out of these carols, um, I can tell you the titles just in case you're curious, uh, Gdy się Chrystus rodzi is perfectly fine to be transposed, uh, some of those left hand parts, an octave higher. Uh, Miserna cicha, you can just take that one note higher or a whole bar where that B happens an octave higher. For those of you whose harps finish on that lower C. Uh, in the carol Wesoło Nowine, the Joyful Tidings, you only have that low B occurring twice and it's perfectly fine to move it an octave higher. And then we had uh, Ment de Świata, the wise man. Let me check what was the situation there. I don't think you had that B very often. You had it a few times, but most of the times it's also fine to just play a B an octave higher. So if your harp has that low C below middle C, you'll be perfectly fine playing the carols. Um, I think most of the harps go quite high in that range, but just for your reference, the highest note which happens in the carols will not be very high because we want to be able to sing them after all. From what I see right now, the highest note is the E above the high C, and I really don't think that it goes any higher than that. No, that's the, the highest note that you will get in all the carols. So the range being from B below the low C and E above the high C. So any pedal, any, uh, sorry, pedal harp will work, liver harp um, with, how many strings are that? 14, uh, 17, around 20 string harp. And also one of the carols, Lula i Jezuniu, that I played three weeks ago and that is still available to have a peek when you go to the page of the shop you will see that carol being displayed. That particular car carol is perfectly fine to be played on an adventure harp like the one you can see over there. Let me bring it forward so you see what I mean. That's the harp, the adventure 20 second, uh, sorry, 20 string harp tuned in C major. Uh, Lula Ejej Zunio is also in C major and you will be perfectly fine playing that carol on Adventure because the lowest note used is also the lowest string on Adventure Hub. Maybe I will use it to demonstrate some points later, but for now let's put it down. Quite crowded with all the harps. Uh, just checking Instagram. Hello to everyone who came up. Quite, quite busy there, not so, 
not uh, quite as busy on Facebook, but there are um, there are different days. Sometimes it's more busy there. Somewhere, sometimes elsewhere. If you have any other questions coming to your mind while you're watching that, let me know, and we will move now quickly over to the topic of today, which was how to approach starting a new piece. Of course, this is a very very vast topic, and these are just a few tips that you may want to think about if you haven't thought about them earlier that might make your life a bit more easy so tip number one looking at the piece without really playing just looking at what it looks like on the page and watching out looking for patterns in the music by the way there's a whole separate life on patterns finding patterns in music i'll put a link in there i'll find out which number exactly was that and i'll put it up there because you might be interested in looking at that. So finding patterns, just very briefly, they might be rhythmic patterns, uh, some particular rhythm repeating, uh, patterns like steps or jumps or chords, and then you can see if there is a series of note, notes going in one direction in one rhythm, and then you see a similar rhythm elsewhere, and they are also going up. It, there is a great chance that this is the same pattern just being repeated on different parts of the harp. So look at that, because then it might be worth first thinking about fingering, which will be consistent for both beats, uh, practicing those two sections in a group, and basically being aware of what happens in the piece. So finding about patterns, and also finding about breaks from the patterns. So let me come back to Lula i Jezunio, the piece that you can play, play on the Adventurer harp. The piece that you can also see when you go to the page of the carols, you can still have a peek at that one piece of music. And when you look at uh, Lulei Jezunio, translated as Lulei Little Jizu, you will see that left hand, hope you, uh, hope Instagram will see somehow, you will see that left hand has repeated pattern of uh, one, two, one, two, two, one, two, one, and so on. But at one point, that pattern uh, breaks slightly. You can see that in the fingering at the bottom. Um, I think Facebook can see, even if it's in the mirror reflection, you can go to the website and have a look. From breaking on from one to one three, we're moving to four, three, two, one, and moving quite high up in the range. So that's one place that you will definitely want to practice, put, your, uh, put more attention to. Um, in that live three weeks ago where I was talking about this carol, I was also showing you ways of making that particular place a bit easier. Uh, but that's definitely one signal of being a bit more mindful about what happens in place where pattern changes. Then, still about the patterns, still in the topic of patterns, sometimes things that will look like different pattern may actually be the same pattern. and. One example would be Carol that was briefly mentioned last week, Miser Nachika, which is uh, still and lowly. Let me just find it. I have a slight, I have a feeling that I didn't mention the title of that Carol last week, but that was the one in the minor key, where um, which sounded like that. If not, you can watch the live from last week. So that carol, forgot one liber, uh, left hand pattern at first is two notes and different combinations of that. And then when you move to the third line, to the second half of the piece, it might look at first very different because the rhythm will become crochet minim, crochet minim, and it will look at like nothing what you've seen before. But actually, when you have a closer look, what was earlier a minim of E and G now becomes crochet E minim G. Then we had a chord and that chord turns into that. And you will see that all that was earlier a chord now becomes uh, the same chord but just played with the bottom note first and the top note later. So it's worth to, uh, to spot such concealed patterns and include them in your practice strategy. Practice one after another. Then, uh, still on the topic of patterns, but moving on, uh, second point will be, once you spot the patterns and similarities, check if you understand the fingering well. In these carols, 
Some suggestions are included. Just make sure that you know when do you break away from the notes, where do you stay. I decided not to include any lines connecting the fingerings. I decided that it will be up to you to decide where you connect things, where you don't. So you don't have to wrap too much out when you get your carols. But um, basically making sure, I'm just trying to show you another carol which has more levers to put down. Making sure that you, if you have three notes in a row, that you know that from there on you will be again placing three fingers, sorry, two fingers there. And practice that even without the rhythm. Sometimes the rhythm can be quite complex. Here there are sometimes a few dotted crochets here and there. I would practice that first without the rhythm. So even if the original rhythm should be one and two and three and four and I would go in equal crochets and just trying to be really quick with placing placing all the groups that you want to place. Um, before you get to looking in the rhythm, try to at least have a draft, a rough idea of a fingering. And then moving on to the rhythm, when you're having that general look at a new piece, see if there is any rhythm that prevails. There might be maybe dotted rhythms. This is quite popular in traditional music, I think, and in these Polish carols, we do get quite a lot of dotted rhythms. Sometimes we get um, some semi-quavers as well, so just making sure that you're really clear how that rhythm will sound like. And I would recommend working on that away from the harp, so taking your right hand to tap on your right knee, left hand to tap on your left knee or thigh, and then just going with counting out loud and just making sure that you know where things fall in which hand. And then you can fit that rhythm into the fingering, okay? So these were just few three things, uh, uh, sorry, three things to watch out when working on a new piece, when looking at a new piece and thinking about a strategy to work on that. And to all of you who downloaded already the Christmas carols, please let me know if there's anything in particular that you would like to know about the carols or if you have any questions about to how, how to play that or about any technical problem that you encounter in there. I haven't quite decided on the topic of next week's live. My initial idea was to talk a bit more about little finger, which of course, you know, we don't use that finger to play on the harp, but I see quite a lot of people having that little finger stiffening quite a bit, um, doing funny things. And I wanted to talk a bit more how to manage that. So that was one idea, quite a general one, maybe not something to do specifically with the carols, but because it's not set in stone and decided yet, if you have anything that you would like to ask about the carols or any problem in any particular carol, I'm happy to make it a focus of next week and um, talk a bit more about that. All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much to all of you for coming and uh, especially big thanks to all of you who bought the carols already. Send me your feedback, please. If there, Even if there's nothing that you have particular problem with, but you think other people might have problem with, that will be also very good to hear. And I'll see you next week. And of course, I will let you know in advance what the topic will be, but send me your suggestions anyway. Um, have a lovely weekend and enjoy practicing.